Hello there, my name is Jonathan and this is Jonathan's Days. This is a channel where I speak mostly about lots of yarn and fibre and crafts and all those good things. Normally I do a knitting podcast where I talk through what I've been working on, what I've been making, what's my new purchase, all those kinds of fun knitting, yarning things. But this video is special because this is my 2023 wrap up of everything I've knit. This is one of my most favorite videos to make to look back on the last year. This is the third one of these videos that I've made. If you are uh, new here, welcome. I think you've joined in at a good time. You can see a good view of all the things that I make and what I get up to. And if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I hope you're excited to see the big wrap up of the year. This year, I'm gonna do things a little bit differently. I'm gonna run through everything that I've made. I'm also gonna rank them. So on YouTube, there's this genre of videos where people rank um, different things. If it's costumes, books, you name it, people rank it in a different ranking system. And so I've come up with a little fun ranking system just to make it more interesting while I talk about all the things that I've made. Uh, so I'm gonna be referring to my notes here. So how we're going to do it, we're going to go through everything that I've made. We're going to start with sweaters, jumpers, as I call them, and then we're going to do socks, and then we're going to do finish with uh, accessories. So shawls, hats, those kinds of things. And uh, I'm going to rank them as I go down. So at the end of it, we'll see kind of a tier list of everything that I've made. And the tier list I've come up with, so they'll be up on the screen, but uh, so the best rank you can get is S rank. I know it's strange. S rank, it's like super amazing, the best. And then this is gonna be like an heirloom piece. This is something I want to have and own forever. I want to pass on to future generations. It's amazing, obsessed, the best rank you can get. Next is A rank, which is a uh, wear it every other day. So this is something that I've made that I love. It was a joy to make and I wear it every other day. So it's something I wear all the time in my wardrobe. I think that's a really good barometer of whether something's a good knit. It's like, do I actually wear it all the time? Third rank is B rank, and that was fun to make, but I don't wear it every day. Maybe it's something that I wear every other week or once a month, or if it's a certain season or a certain time of year, that would be the B rank. After that is C rank. It's something that's nice. I enjoyed making it. It's nice, you know, it's held up well, um, but I could give it away to someone else and I wouldn't be upset about it and I would be happy to let it go. And then the last rank is F rank and that stands for frog. If you're a knitter, you know the term frog, which means to rip something out, rip it, rip it. That's why we call it frogging. And so it's an item where my plan is to unravel it and I'm not gonna continue to wear it. So let's see how we get on with that. Let's start at the top again. I'm gonna keep referring to my list because I made a lot of stuff, you guys. So I'm gonna start with uh, sweaters, jumpers, as I say here, I'm in London, by the way. I'm from Ireland, but I'm here in London. Uh, so I'm gonna start with jumpers, kind of chronologically, and then we'll see how we get on. So I have uh, the, on the screen will flash up what, who the designer is. I know the designer of everyone, but what the yarn was and the colorways. It's been a busy year for making for me, so I might not necessarily remember every single colorway right now as I'm recording, but it will be up on the screen and will be in the description down below if you'd like to look them up. And what else do I have to tell you? Yeah, I'm gonna talk through how it's worn, all that kind of stuff, and also have some um, insert video of me trying it on um, standing up and some close-ups of the actual garment. So let's start and dive right into what was my first finished object of 2023, which was this. This is, doo -doo, this is my Alpenglow sweater. This is a pattern by Andrea Maori. This was uh, the Rhinebeck 2023 sweater. So every year there's this festival in New York, which takes place in Rhinebeck. It's the New York Sheep and Wool Festival, which I attended this last year. Oh no, so I'm lying to you. This was the Rhinebeck sweater for 2022. Um, so I went in 2023 and I made this sweater. So we'll get to that in a minute. But this was the one for 2022. I cast this on on Christmas Eve in 2022, but I finished it in 2023. So I counted as the finished object for 2023. This is technically the Alpenglow 2 version of the sweater, which was um, graded and sized for a more masculine fit. I made the size three, I believe. I probably could have gone up to a size four. Uh, it does fit pretty snug on me, um, but I do really love it. What I will say is the I in initially wanted the 
this color here, which is on the collar and the cuffs. I did want this, I thought this was going to be more of a teal, so it would be like a teal with the blue that's here in the color changing yarn and the yoke with the orange as a kind of a contrast color, but it ended up being more green. So I still like the finished um, look of it. It's so different to anything else in my wardrobe and it is um, something kind of like pushed me out of my comfort zone color wise, which I quite enjoyed. I do like the kind of Nordic look that it has. Um, so this is knit out of Magpie Fibers. Uh, I used Nest, it's on the screen. It's Nest and it's, oh, what is it called? It's the collaboration with Spin Cycle. So it's dyed in the yarn, I believe. So that's this one here is dyed in the yarn. Um, I could be completely wrong. And then the color changing is Spin Cycle dyed in the wool. And this fluffy part here is um, Magpie Fibers Feather or something. It's their fluff, one of their fluffy yarns. Uh, for here, this also appears on the cuff. So it matches here like this. And then the bottom ribbing is um, kind of a color, uh, what do they call it? Corrugated ribbing. So it's kind of a color work ribbing. And the colorway I know for the spin cycle, color changing throughout the body, is Robin's Egg, which is one of my favorite spin cycle color changing yarn colorways. And um, this I love. I'm, you know, it, as I said, it's unlike anything else in my wardrobe. I really enjoyed making it. And um, even though the colorways weren't exactly what I envisioned for it, I'm still really, really happy with it. And I wear it quite a lot. And so if I was to rank it, I would probably put it in B rank. Yes, because it's fun, I enjoyed it, but I don't wear it every single day. So this is probably a B rank for me, but still beautiful um, finished object. And I was really, really happy with it. So I will make a little st stack there. Okay, reaching down. Next up, this is this one is the Gold Star by Maxim Sear, Max the Knitter. This one I know I'm cast on in January and uh, I will tell you the story of this, but it is knit out of Walcott Yarns Origin, which is their worsted weight yarn, I believe. They have Opus, which is a sport weight and it's a wonderful yarn. And this is Opus. This is my first time working with Opus. It's a nice, chunky, squishy, soft yarn. Um, I, where did I buy the yarn for this? I think I bought this at Unravel Festival in London in 2022, I want to say. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And I think I originally planned to knit a different pattern. I can't remember, but I ended up going with this pattern. And part of the reason I went with this pattern was because I wanted to wear this for Unravel in 2023, which is a knitting festival here in London. Uh, it's in Farnham, which is just outside London um, proper. And so it's got this color work yoke and uh, color work sleeves and more down the bottom. So it's really, really beautiful. And I think the pattern is in Brooklyn Tweed Tones is the call for yarn, which I believe is like a um, woolen spun. So it's kind of a lighter um, spun yarn. Whereas this is worsted spun, it's really, really warm and cozy. The colorways ended up looking, I mean, it is definitely this colorway. I can't remember the names of any of them, but this colorway um, for the top here is way more pink in person and but on the camera it does look red and then this kind of sprucey colorway for the main color is definitely um kind of a dark pine green i would say so in person it looks like just pink and like a pine green but like on camera now it is looking red and green so it does give very festive vibes which is not what i wanted um so that was not not anyone's fault but my own but yeah so it does give more festive vibes so i find it hard to wear this um very often uh the other thing is is that i feel like i rushed to get this done for unravel and i feel like i was had very like messy knitting so you can see in this color work here across the um kind of 
speckled part. There's like this line. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it. You probably see it, but there's like a line that goes right across here and it's just poor color work management. My tension was all over the place. I believe I was rushing. You can really see it. Um, I don't know, it mightn't be obvious to other people, but it, it's really obvious to me and I just don't like how it looks. And so it's not necessarily the fault of the pattern or the yarn necessarily. I think if you, the previous yarn or the previous sweater is like sport weight, so it was like a smaller gauge and this one is a lot thicker and chunkier. It probably was the wrong yarn choice um, for it. Maybe I should have gone with a woolen spun yarn and I shouldn't have rushed through it and I should have picked different colors. So it's not anyone's fault but my own. So I do think it's a really cool pattern. It is very um, striking and balanced. I do like a lot of aspects of it. So it's not nobody's fault but my own. I think I've worn it uh, quite a few times. I do need to um, uh, shave it. It's um, pilling quite a bit because it is like a fluffy, squishy yarn. But yeah, so this one uh, is good pattern, good yarn, bad choices. Um, so for me, I would probably rank this a C. I wouldn't frog it necessarily. Well, maybe I would frog it, but um, I would frog it, but then I wouldn't knit it into another sweater because I don't like this color combo because it reads to Christmas. Um, depending on the patterns. So this would definitely be a C for me. It's nice, but I could give it away to someone and I wouldn't be too upset about it. So yes, that is the gold star by Max the Knitter. Okay, moving on. This one is the Stockholm Slipper by Petite Knit is the pattern. The yarn is on the screen, but it's wool. Uh, Raw Wool Company, and this is their Wensleydale um, yarn. This is a, is it a DK weight? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a DK. I can't remember. It'll be on the screen. Um, so yeah, this is their Wensleydale yarn. This um, pattern I've knit before. I've knit it, um, yeah, once before, and I do plan on making the, this is the round neck version. I do plan on making the V-neck version at some point in my life. This is the I believe the medium size I did should be the medium size. It's medium or large, but um, this pattern I've knit before, it's just a really simple, uh, well-constructed slipover. And this yarn, I am just obsessed with this yarn. I got this quantity of yarn at Unravel 2023. So, and it is Wensleydale uh, Raw Wool Company they are a fantastic, fun company that create super high quality wool. And I'm gonna see if I can hold it up. So you can see I've went to a knitting group. Uh, I volunteered to um, knit blankets for people who are experiencing homelessness. And I was wearing this and someone was like, oh, is that like mohair? Like, is that a mohair? Did you hold mohair on that? And I was like, no, 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 it's just Wensleydale. So, I'm just obsessed. The color is like, it's, a, I, it's so wearable. I wear this all the time. Um, it's so soft, it's so fun. And I love, I don't know if I can show you here. Um, there's a little spot here, which is like a little blonde patch. And you know, Raw Wool Company, their, one of their taglines is like, uh, like wool in the color sheep intended. So it's like not dye, this is the natural color of the sheep. And I love that there's just this little fleck where the sheep must have had a little blonde patch for whatever reason that happened naturally. Just like in humans, sometimes you have a little patch of your hair that's a little lighter color. And I love that's, that, I love that that's found its way into my garment. And I wear this so often. I wear it almost every other day and um, I love it. I, looking forward to going to Unravel Festival again in next month and I will be getting a sweater's quantity of raw wool again uh, to make probably something similar to this. I feel like it just makes such nice wearable, warm, comfortable, soft pieces. So I, I absolutely love it and highly recommend it. Pattern is super simple, easy to follow, 
there are tutorials now with English subtitles on them. So if there is, there's a tutorial about um, the, the shoulder pickup, um, which is in with English subtitles. So that's really helpful. So yes, highly recommend everything, pattern and especially the yarn. This is definitely an A rank. I wear it almost every other day when I wake up in the morning. I mean, I wear my knitwear every single day, but this is one I reach for time and time again. It's so nice to throw on, keeps me warm. I even wear it in the summer with like a t-shirt or a tank top underneath. It's just all the best things about wool and amazing knits wrapped into one in this garment. So this is definitely a solid A rank for sure on this one. Moving right along. This is the Metamorphic by Andrea Maori. This is the second Andrea Maori pattern of the year that I made. I made three Andrea, Ma Andrea Maori patterns this year. She was, uh, or well, three sweaters. I made five, six, seven. I made seven Andrea Maori patterns this year. I am a big fan um, of her patterns. I find them very wearable and very fun to make. So yes, this is the Metamorphic, and this is knit out of Spin Cycle Metamorphic, which is the main color, so it's the purple on the collar, and then the body has the contrasting color, which is um, Spin Cycle dyed on the wool in the colorway Stay Ready. The Metamorphic, I believe they just have like, because met uh, the Metamorphic yarn from Spin Cycle is like a recycled yarn. Um, I love recycled yarns from these companies that have the bits that like are remaining and they spin them up into different yarns. This is one of those. And the Metamorphic, um, they're kind of like one of a kind. So this is like lavender something color, but it's not something they'll, they do different drops of just like what's available and what the mill naturally produces depending on what colors they're spinning up. So it's, you can get some really unique colorways um, through this yarn. But I loved that it's like recycled and, um, you know, knitting and using 100% uh, wool is a very um, sustainable, natural process. As much as I was talking about heirloom pieces, the nice thing about wool is that it will decompose and degrade um, naturally and so the, when something is sustainable within an already sustainable craft I just love it it's great so this is a reverse stockinette pattern so you knit it inside out and you turn it right side out and then it shows this side which is the reverse stockinette along with the color change aspect it's just so cool this is a very different shaped garment for me because it's kind of like a wider, um, lots of positive ease. So it's not fitted on my body, it's quite positive. Um, and it's got, one thing I don't like in a lot of knitwear, especially because I make so many patterns that are made by women designers and are usually graded to the, um, a woman's standard sizing is the boat neck. So there tends to be like quite wide necklines. And this does have that a little bit but it's not the most egregious and I did kind of knit it a little bit deeper to avoid that um, and I do kind of style it with certain kind of t-shirts that help it kind of sit nicely on my neck um, but it is quite a fun different shape for me I do like that it's you know it's a lavender gray purple marl with the, the color change is also um, quite neutral so it's created quite a fun neutral piece another thing I really like about this is that it is um, not something you pick you buy in a store like you can't buy something like this it's so kind of um, unique and I do like the faux seam which comes down the middle and this also comes down the sleeve as well you can see so really, really nice piece. It was so much fun to knit. I just have such nice memories of knitting this. It kind of knit up quite fast for me. It's quite fun. I think I might make another one in the future. If there's like a fun metamorphic drop, I think that would be really, really nice. Um, yeah, I wear it a lot and really, really enjoy it. So this one, I would definitely put this in a, hmm, would I do an A or a B for this one? Fun to make, but don't wear it every day. So this is probably a B rank for me. Fun to make, but I don't wear it every day. It is great though. It probably, if it, it would definitely be between the two um, ranks if I was to um, 
to to kind of do a half do a half rating. So that's the Metamorphic and by Andrew Murray. Loved it. Cool. Next sweater. Let's jump down to do, 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 do. let's do summer knits. Let's do some summer knits. Okay. So I have two summer knits, I would say, and this is the first one. This is the Air Tea by Ozetta, and you can tell this has been folded up because I haven't really been wearing summer knits since we're deep in winter here in London. And this I knit out of Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino, which I've knit with before. So it's a cotton merino blend. I knit, I think, the large size in this one, and this is a super oversized, flowy, warm, or not warm, cool summer t-shirt for me. Um, nice sleeves, it has really cool construction. Uh, you can see from the back here, it kind of starts from the back and you knit out and down, I believe. I can't remember. Really, really nice details. The neckline is a super nice detail with an I-cord and the sleeves as well with an I-cord. And it doesn't really curl that much for something that is has no like ribbing at the, at the bottom to do it. I've worn this in very warm um, climates. I wore this to Portugal and Barcelona this year and um, it was super cool to wear and uh, really, really nice. I'm gonna cough. <coughs> um, oh, take a second. <coughs> so I've knit with this yarn before and I really do enjoy it. Uh, it even though it is like a cotton, it is a cotton yarn, the blend of the merino gives it that nice quality that we love about wool. It has a little bit of elasticity while still being like cool and uh, temperature regulating. If I was to make it again, which I might do, it's actually a really, really nice pattern. I would go down a size for sure. And um, I would also realize this was, I think on three and a half millimeter needles and fingering weight. It was a commitment of a piece to make. So yes, that is the Air Tea by Ozetta. It is a really nice summer knit. I highly recommend it. I think I could even wear it in the winter with a long sleeve underneath it. But really, really enjoyed making it. Excellent pattern writing. I do remember that it's very, very, very well written. So if you do want to try some nice summer knits this year, I highly recommend this pattern. Uh, ranking wise, I think in the summer, I would definitely give this an A rank. I would wear this every other day in the summer. It's so nice. And I think I do want to make another one this year. Now that I'm looking at it, I'll go down a size or two. Yeah, I probably could go down even two size, make it a more fitted tee in a like a navy or a gray would be quite cool. Um, and knitting for olive yarn, always, always amazing. Can't recommend it enough. Next, in the summer knits section for the garments, sweaters, jumpers, tops, whatever you want to call them. This is the Totally Tank Top by Jessie Made Designs. This one is knit out of Knitting for Olive Pure Silk. This is my first time using the Pure Silk yarn, which was amazing. As I said, Knitting for Olive yarns are wonderful and a joy to knit with. This is probably the opposite. This is super fitted and tight on me depending on how many ice cream cones I've had that day in the summer. And um, excellent pattern writing as always with Jessie Made. She has super interesting construction. What I will say about silk is that pure silk, it's my first time knitting with pure silk and it is uh, cons like, if you, it shows like differences in tension and things like that. So you do have to be careful with that. So in like a pure stockinette section, I can see here where I've changed yarns and um, you, you can see it. So there's kind of, you have to be aware that kind of just be prepared for when you change balls of wool, um, what are the research, what are the best techniques to um, knit in your next ball of wool. Wool, he says, when this is pure silk. Next ball of yarn. Um, so yeah, super, super fun to make. Again, this was like another fingering weight piece. So it kind of took a bit longer than I thought it would, but it was still really, really nice. Um, 
for sure. Would I make it again? Yeah, I would make it again, this time a size up and probably in a different color. And I also, so part of the kind of, one of the features of this is the neckline. So it's this rolled neckline you can see here on the racer back, which is quite cool. Um, the rolled neckline, I, I did the rolled neckline because I wanted to kind of knit it as it was designed. And it's, again, one of those features that's like, you can just buy a tank top and it will look like normal. And kind of, I could have done a the ribbed edge, which is the same as the edge here. And um, it would have just looked like a tank top, but by doing this rolled aspect of it, it makes it look different. And I like it, it looks different. It, does it make it more wearable? I don't think so. If I if I um, did the regular rib finish on the the neckline, I would probably wear this more. Um, but I still wear it. I wear it with a shirt over it uh, in the summer, and it's 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 super super nice. And uh, we're gonna go hit up some winter sun next month, so. I will be wearing this, I will be taking this, this will be going with me. This, I would say, is a definitely a B rank. It is was fun to make. I like the yarn, um, but I, I wouldn't wear it every day, even in the summer, for that. Let's do, yeah, one of my gift knits for the year. So this was one of my gift knits. This was for my partner. If you've watched the most recent episode, you've seen this tons. This is the So Basic by Maxim Sear, Max the Knitter. Uh, this one I knit out of uh, Rosa Pumar Mondine, one of my favorite yarns. And this uh, is a, it's so basic. The nice, interesting thing about this is the detail on the sleeves. There's a nice ribbed detail on the sleeve. It's a raglan shaping. Uh, I need to lengthen it a bit for my boyfriend. It is for my partner, my boyfriend. Um, I have to lengthen a bit. It's a bit short on the body for him. But otherwise, he absolutely loves this. Uh, I've made one for myself a couple of years ago in purple. And I absolutely love the pattern. Uh, it's so wearable. He's been wearing it tons. And uh, so I do kind of need to lengthen it for him while he... Um, because he wants to wear it a lot. Uh, the yarn, as I said, is one of my favorites. I, I use it all the time and it just is an amazing Portuguese workhorse of a wool. Um, yeah, I love Max's patterns. It's it's really, really wonderful. Um, can't recommend enough. I've made it twice. I'll probably make it a third time. I won't dwell on it too much because you've heard me talk about it in the last couple of episodes of the regular show. But yes, a wonderful basic sweater that um, should be in everyone's kind of pattern library, I think, and um, makes a super, super wearable, easy to style piece with wonderful yarn. This is the size three, which is the size that fits me and fits my partner, we're similar size. Uh, a little bit more oversized on him, on me, a little bit more fitted on him, but yeah, this is a so basic, love it, love it, love it, can't recommend it enough. This is definitely an A rank, wears it every other day in the winter, for sure. Every time we go out for dinner, anything like that, in the winter, he's wearing this sweater. Oh, you can see the stack is like piling up now. How cute. And um, so that's the So Basic sweater. Love it. So we're in the home stretch for sweaters. Uh, I have three more and they are two slipovers and one cardigan. So let's start with the slipovers. First one is this one, absolutely Epic, epic knit. This is the Hue Vest. This is from the Neons and Neutrals books published by Lina Magazine or Lina Publishing. And this is the knitwear collection that's curated by Amy from La Bienne May. And this pattern immediately jumped out to me when I first got the book. And I'm absolutely obsessed with it. It is a, a garment that's unlike anything I own, anything I've ever made. I like it, I find it hard to style. I'm gonna say that I find it hard to style, but I do love it. Uh, it was an extremely challenging knit. It was probably the most challenging thing I made all year long, and um, it has this amazing stitch pattern. This is the stranded herringbone stitch. So this is stranded color work with quite large needles, and the electric 
neon blue that you see is two strands of a um, fluffy yarn from La Bien Aimée, which is uh, Kumo, which I believe means cloud. And then the main kind of brown color is De Rerum Natura Ulisse. And yeah, so you're holding this quite chunky yarn in one hand and then you're holding two strands held together of a fluffy yarn with very large needles in stranded color work while doing a very strange herringbone stitch. It is absolutely not for the faint of heart but by goodness does it create a show-stopping piece. Um, when I wear this I get compliments from strangers, people call it out, they really really love it. I think it really captured the neons and neutrals spirit that the book was all about. Um, Again, I find it a little bit hard to style, but I am enjoying finding ways to style it. Um, yeah, I do, I, do, I do love it. Again, it was challenging. It's, it's been far enough away now that I'm forgetting how challenging the actual knitting was and I'm just enjoying the finished objects, which means I will probably not make it again. <laughs> so it is a absolutely show-stopping, stunning piece. I'm really, really happy with it, and I'm kind of falling more and more in love with it the more I get away from the actual construction of it. But if you are up for it and you're up for the challenge, like go for it. Um, look at the videos online from the designer, uh, Valerie Ng, who um, has shows you the um, stitches and like construction, parts of the construction. And yeah, I, I absolutely love it. I think I might wear it today. It's so nice. And um, yeah, I really, really like it. I hope you like it too. It's very, very different and stunning as far as I'm concerned. Um, it is a chunky, warm, it's really, really toasty in the winter piece. And so for that reason, it's probably the first A rank. Now it's definitely an A rank because it's like an heirloom piece. Like I, I will never want to give this away. I'll always want to keep this. I've worked so hard on this and I feel like it's just created such a cool garment that I, I would never want to give it up or frog it. So this is definitely my first S rank. Absolutely amazing. Um, the whole Neons and Neutrals collection is a wonderful collection of patterns by a super diverse, cool group of designers. So if you haven't gotten the book, I would definitely have a look, see. And the, the yarns are very expensive. This is a very expensive garment that I have made and I am you know, grateful that I can spend my disposable income on wonderful yarns like this. Um, it has created a beautiful, beautiful garment, which I can't recommend enough. If you are up for the challenge, go for it. It's really, really cool. Um, yeah, definitely an S rank heirloom piece. Never giving this one up. Um, want to wear it more now that I'm looking at it, so I'll probably wear it today, but well, um, after I'm done filming this. So yes, this is the U-Vest from the Neons and Neutrals collection. Love it, absolutely love it. Next vest, this is the Tessellated Vest. This is by Andrew Murray. This is my, um, this was the Rhinebeck sweater. So there was a pullover version and a vest version of this. This is the Tessellated um, pattern. A uh, stitch pattern that Andrew Mowry has put into quite a few garments. There's socks and a cowl, I believe, in this pattern. This is another, speaking of expensive garments, this is another expensive garment. Um, so the yarns I have is um, John Arbin. Um, oh, on the screen, can't remember the name. Uh, it was my first time using a John Arbin yarn and I absolutely love it. It has such a depth of color here on this one uh, as the main color. I absolutely loved this color. I might, oh gosh, looking at it, I'm like, oh, I need a, I need a sweaters quantity. I need to maybe do a so basic in it. Be so nice. Mm. Anyway, absolutely love the yarn. The, my pink fluff is from Ching Fiber. This is in the color Bone and it is their Melted Baby Suri, which I've knit with before. It's an amazing fluffy yarn. And then the um, kind of Teal blips, this is spin cycle dyed in the wool in the color Havana, I believe. It's on the screen. Um, I I love this vest. I, I love it so much. I 
again, I find the vests a little bit hard to style when they've got these colors. I really kind of pushed myself out of my comfort zone with this color scheme. I think I need to buy some more shirts that, or make some more shirts to go underneath this one. This I wore to New York Sheep and Wool, Rhinebeck, um, this year, and I got to meet Andrew Mowry wearing this, and I can pop up a photo, um, which was one of my favorite memories of this year. I feel so lucky and blessed to have gone on that trip. And um, yes, this was a like a time investment. The, the stitch does not grow very quickly. It grows quite slowly. It is a fingering weight um, garment. I have um, I have yarn for the pullover version. And again, similar to the U-Vest, now that I've gotten far enough away from it, I'm like, oh, is it time to cast on the pullover version with that um, I have in my stash? Um, but it is slow, it's slow going. Um, even this took me like as long as a regular sweater would have taken me um, to make, but I'm so happy with the final, um, the final piece. Maybe this is the one I'll wear today, I don't know. But I love it. I'm so happy with it. I'm happy with the colors. Yeah, I can't, I can't recommend it enough. It's a really, really wearable piece. You can like, because of the tessellated pattern, I feel like, I don't know, you can go crazy with color and it still kind of all melds together and makes something beautiful. And that's kind of, kind of like a Monet. Do you know what I mean? Like the further away you are, the like, it all melds the color and then you get closer and you can see the individual colors, especially you've got like a, you know, the, the color changing yarn that I have is very subtle, but if you get something that's really, really drastic, it could make such a cool piece. So yes, that is my tessellated vest. This is definitely an S rank. I love this so much. I'm so happy with it and it has so many beautiful memories for me as well. I will never give this piece up. Um, this shows you know, this piece to me means community. It means the amazing friends that I've made through knitting. And um, I absolutely love this. I will never give this piece up. S rank, absolutely love it. Highly recommend the whole Tessellated collection. If you want to, you know, dig down with a really, really nice, fun pattern, definitely have that for you, for sure. And my last garment sweater is my first cardigan that I ever made. This one I won't talk about too long for those of you who watch the channel regularly because it's my most recent finished object. This is my bumpy cardigan. This is by Max the Knitter. Um, I finished this just before Christmas. Um, I think I finished it on Max, Max's birthday. Um, just before Christmas. This is knit out of Le Garçon. Uh, British, wool, British DK in the color Avador's Water, and then we've got some Spin Cycle Nocturne as the bumps, stripes that are going along. I won't talk about it too much. I'm obsessed with cardigans. I love cardigans so much. Uh, I am, have got the sleeves and a bit of the body left to do on my current um, sweater whip, and once that's done, we are cardigan, cardigan, cardigan. Can't get enough of the cardigans. So yes, uh, you will definitely see more cardigan content from me in the very near future. But the Bumpy Cardigan has unlocked that. The pattern is wonderfully well written. Again, definitely a time investment. They're 3.75 millimeter needles, so not huge needles. But you are, when you're creating these beautiful um, I-cord bumps, hence the name Bumpy, the stripes. <clears throat> Once you're creating those, you are making an I, doing an I-cord cast off and picking back up. So it's not a fast... Um, excuse me, not a fast knit, but it is really worth it uh, for the final object. It is just a really fun, again, I love these knits where it's, I like my knits to be one of two things, super comfortable, wearable, simple, or something you could never buy in a shop. Those are kind of my two kind of things I tessellate between. Um, I want someone to be like, that's nice, and be like surprised that I made it because it looks like you could buy it in a shop, or like something so out there, so crazy, people are like, that's amazing, where did you get it? And it's like, well, you can't get it, you gotta make it yourself. I'll teach you how to knit, let's go. So this is one of those for me. You could get a boring striped cardigan, but it's not gonna have the 3D dimension and details that this bumpy cardigan does. Absolutely love it. Um, can't wait to wear it all this year. It's been um, a super fuzzy, cozy, warm piece, especially at home, just to throw on and keep warm. So absolutely love it. 
the yarn, the Le Garçon British DK, the whole British line. I'm using their British yarn in my current sweater work in progress and it is amazing. It's, it's like one of my favorite yarns I've ever worked with. It's so good, it's so me. It's like rustic but soft, natural, amazing. Yeah, impeccable, love it. Uh, so yeah, that's my bumpy cardigan, absolutely. It is an S rank, I'm never giving this away. It is my first cardigan, I'm so proud of it and I really, really love it. So can't recommend it enough. Time investment, but a piece you'll probably love and use for a very, very long time. So absolutely S rank. We're bashing out the S ranks, bam, 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 at the end. Okay, so let's jump to, we are gonna do a quick sock talk. First sock, okay, some of these are looking a little worse for wear because I wear my socks. Um, one, I'm gonna take off my feet, and the other one, I, um, yeah, the socks have, it's been an interesting sock year for me. I have only made three pairs, and um, that I, I think I've only made three pairs. Socks for me are quite like a utility project. Um, I wear my socks, I wear them pretty regularly, I wear them most days, so um, yeah, I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't tend to make very kind of like, I don't know, extravagant socks because they are a utility for me. I like, I think I've re definitely realized this year that I like a ribbed, a ribbed sock that hugs my foot and is made with like good yarn that's sturdy. That's it. So it was a quiet year for me as regards sock making. This is one of them that I made. This was out of uh, Rose Pomar Mondim, um, dyed by La Bienne May. This is in the color, no idea, on the screen. But this one was a just a three by one rib on the front of the sock and then stockinette on the back. Um, I did this as a like a long tube and then I put in the heels uh, as, an, as afterthought heels. And um, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, they fit pretty okay. Because it's non superwash, you can see it's really like felted on the, the foot of the sock, which is pretty normal for me and my socks. Um, they're pretty nice, like a, again, a utility sock. Um, I think I'm finding that I'm probably gonna move away from kind of <sighs> colored socks just because, or like brightly, you know, dyed socks, just because they've just become more of a utility thing for me rather than like a show off thing. So um, this three by one was nice. Um, I think I definitely want the ribbing to go the whole way around the um, cuff of the sock and not just along the front. I think I like it on the bottom of my foot, but not um, on the leg. I like the leg to be held up by ribbing. Um, yeah, socks are one of those things for me that like, the more you knit, the more you can kind of perfect what fits your foot, what you like, what you don't like. And I, I think I'm getting very close to like, sock piece, you know, finding what I like the most. So this was just a three by one. This, is, this isn't this is a pattern. This is just something I just did, you know, I think I did 64 stitches on 2.5 millimeter needles, um, knit my tube, put in my afterthought heels, done. So no pattern for it, um, but wearable, good. Um, this would definitely, I think all my socks are gonna be the same rank, which what is the rank where I wear it every day? Every day, yeah, A rank, they're all A rank. They're good socks, wear them almost every day. Um, so that's the, just a three by one pattern, not, well, not a pattern, just a kind of recipe. Um, the other one, I'm going to tell you in a second. The other ones I'm wearing right now, I'll pop up a photo, <laughs> but I can show you. So these are, look how fluffy they are from being in my slippers. Um, these ones are the Bear Paw Socks by Andrew Mowry. I've knit these um, for my partner for Christmas last year. This is my second time making these. They are ribbed all around. This is Mondim held double uh, to make like a DK weight. So it makes a really pretty marl. Um, I'll pop up a photo so I have to stop sticking, so I can stop sticking my leg in the air. Um, I've made them before. They were super quick knit because they're like a DK weight chunky sock. Uh, they're on 3.5 millimeter needles. I like bashed them out in like two weeks, like super, super fast, maybe even less than two weeks because it was cold in London and I needed some socks. So I just blazed through them. I'm going to make this pattern time and time and again. Um, Andrew Mary has two. These are similar sock patterns. There's Bear Paul, which is the DK weight sock and the DRK everyday sock, which is like the normal fingering weight, four ply weight sock pattern. They're the same kind of, they're essentially the same pattern. It's like a two by one ribbed pattern with um, what they call a flegal heel. 
and I find that they fit so well. So they're probably, it's probably going to end up just being my regular sock pattern moving forward into 2024. I already have some yarn pulled out for another pair of the um, fingering weight ones, the DRK everyday ones, but the bear pull ones are great. They're such a good gift knit. I highly recommend it as a gift knit. I know someone in my family will definitely want a pair next year for Christmas and I will always be making a pair. They, I mean, even though they're DK weight, they work like in shoes. Like I've worn them just as normal socks. Um, especially in cold days in London. So absolutely loved that. I love the Marled look. You can, the pattern has like striping as well. There's lots of nice things you can do. So I highly recommend the pattern. And yeah, bear paw socks, DRK everyday socks, great. Bear paw socks, absolutely in A rank. I wear them every other day. Um, yeah, absolutely wonderful. Can't recommend enough. The last pair of socks that I, okay. So I didn't finish these. Okay, I, I did finish them last year in 2023. A couple of days ago, I was like organizing things and I pulled out of a project bag this pair of socks and I realized that all I had to do was Kitchener a heel closed or toe closed and then weave in the ends and block them and they would be finished. Do you, any longtime viewers remember this pair of Curio socks that I made at some point this year? I completely forgot about them. I've never worn them. And my other one, which is right down here, yeah, here it is. It just has a heel left. Why did nobody tell me that I've forgotten all about this and need to just literally Kitchener this heel closed, weave in my ends, and then I'll have a pair of socks. I've never even worn these. What, what's going on, Jonathan? Jeez. So yeah, I've made two pairs of Curio socks. This is my third pair. I completely forgot about these. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Maybe I knit too much and for some reason these fell out of my mind, but either way, I need to get my life together, Kitchener this and wear these socks. I have two other pairs of Curious socks. I absolutely love them. I love them so much. I've worn holes in both of them and I need to mend them. So that is um, something I need to do. But yes, I did finish these Curious socks. This is my third pair of them. I love the, this pattern. If I'm not doing that, um, ribbed pattern. I love this pattern because it's like a vanilla plus. There's interest, there's striping. If you've got a nice color changing yarn like this one, um, it just creates so much interest. But yeah, highly recommend. But I'm just like, I feel so bad that I forgot about it. I'm so sorry, Socks, that I forgot about you. So yeah, on my um, to-do list this, um, this week, this month, is to Kitchener this block these, weave in the ends and wear them. And then I need to go and get my other two pairs and mend those holes. So yes, Curio socks, absolutely A rank, love this pattern. Um, yeah, and that was all the sock. It wasn't a sock year for me guys, <laughs> clearly not. Um, one pair I completely forgot about. So clearly I wasn't, my sock mojo wasn't there, but hopefully 2024 is a year of nice, fun, utilitarian socks that I wear and love. I mean, I wear my hand knit socks all the time. And I think I was kind of realizing like, some have had holes in that I need to mend and all them kind of like, where are those ones? So I do need to like add some more to my collection. I think there's some that I might need to retire that don't fit super well. As I mentioned, you've got to get that like perfect sock fit. Um, so yeah, we're not quite there yet, but um, yeah, 2024, more sock, I think more socks, but like better, better quality, knit the patterns I know that work, knit the patterns I know that love and knit the colors that I know that I will wear is the plan for socks in 2024. Okay, let's move on to accessories. The first accessory I wanna mention like super briefly is another gift knit that I made, kind of a step by um, socks. I'll talk about it super briefly. I don't have them because they were a gift. They were gifted to my partner's niece. And they are the North Sea Mittens Junior. This pattern was by Petite Knit. And they are just a tiny pair of pink mittens that I made for my partner's niece. I really enjoyed the pattern. I made them out of um, Sandus Garn Sunday yarn. That's my first time using this yarn. Really, really enjoyed it. Super simple pattern, made really, really nice mittens. A uh, little photo up to see what they look like that hopefully is on the screen. Wanted to mention them briefly. If you're looking for like a simple mitten pattern for um, one of the smaller people in your life, the North Sea Mitten, the North Sea Mittens Junior pattern is wonderful. And um, yeah, the, the Sunday yarn is soft and lovely. So I wanted to mention those briefly as my first accessory. Other accessories this year, um, Oslo hats. 
I have two Oslo hats, which I absolutely love. This is, this one is made out of, um, Wee County yarns. Oh my God. It's the Quay Bear yarn. It's Rebecca's like yarn. What, what is it called? It's on the screen. Kinross 4 ply. There we go. Kinross 4 ply. Color Pewter, I believe is the color. And um, this is an Oslo hat. I have been wearing both of these hats an awful lot in the last um, week here in London because it's been especially cold in the minuses here for London, which is quite rare. And um, this is made out of the Raw Wool Company um, yarn that I picked up at Unravel. I love this hat pattern. It's so wearable. Everyone loves this hat pattern. Uh, I think like with them next to the Muscle Burr, they're probably the like most simple, easy, wearable patterns to make. Again, it's in that category of like something that you could uh, buy in a shop, but you know, pattern written really, really well and you can just pick some wonderful yarns. I think all of these, I think this is a DK, but the we, um, this one, I held it double because it was fingering weight. Um, my boyfriend steals these hats all the time. He does have a muscle burr that he wears a lot, but he'll steal these ones a lot there wonderful can't recommend it enough um yeah they're just two simple neutral super wearable hats that i love to wear so those are my two Oslo hats what are they definitely an a rank for sure wear them every other day in winter love if you haven't go go and make them they're great um so a lot of a ranks there socks and hats in a ranks let's go through Let's talk about this one super briefly because it's quite a new FO. This is the Cozy Bottle by Hinka. And um, this is a hot water bottle cover that I made with some Cory Worsted uh, by Labian May that was left over. This gets so much use. This is, let's put this in S rank. This is an heirloom piece. We are never giving this up until it falls apart. We love this in our house. This is still warm from last night. You can hear it. <laughs> um, this uh, was so much fun to knit, super quick, fun color work, and creates just like a really cool cover for your hot water bottle. Uh, this is in bed every night with us, especially in the last week. We've got our Oslo hats and we've got our cozy bottle that keep us nice and warm. And I have a second hot water bottle that I'll be making another hot water bottle cover, not this pattern, but um, I love the idea of using up some scraps to make a, like a really nice cover um, for something in your life. So yes, highly recommend free pattern as well, which is great. And yeah, we've absolutely loved it. So can't recommend this enough. This is an absolute S rank heirloom piece for us in our family in this house. Um, yeah, absolutely love it. Cool. Uh, other accessories. So shawls, I'm not a big shawl knitter. Um, so I've only ever, I only end up doing like one or two in a year. Um, this year I did two. The first one was the Sea Miss Shawl by George Collin. This appeared in an issue of Lina Magazine, but it's now available as a single pattern. I made this as a gift for my mother, so I don't have it with me. It was knit out of yarns that are on the screen. I cannot remember the names of the yarns. Um, when I was home for Christmas, my mom was wearing it. It was nice to see her wearing it. I was like, oh my God, I forgot how beautiful that was. Um, it was a pretty, it is like a lace and brioche shawl. Kind of challenging for, well, I tried knitting it once and I absolutely failed. And then a couple of years later, I tried again and I was much better at it. And it is a beautiful piece. I have some like detail shots up on the screen. Knitting with a single strand of like lace weight, um, like mohair style yarn was definitely challenging, um, but it did create a piece that I'm really, really proud of and that my mom still wears. And um, yeah, I really, really loved it. If it would be definitely, yeah, I say it's like a A rank or B rank. It's a B rank because I don't wear it. I, if I owned it, I probably wouldn't wear it. It's not my style, but it is an amazing pattern and I really, really enjoyed making it. So it's not a criticism of the pattern or the yarns or anything. It's just that it wasn't made for me. It was made as a gift for someone else. Yeah, for sure. The other shawl I made is, this is the Field Shawl by, I'm not gonna put it on my neck because this time I remember I've got a microphone here and when I put things on my neck, it makes terrible sounds. But this is my field shawl. It's super, super long. 
Da -da 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 -da. And again, super simple garter. Could we do this without knocking the, the mic? Yes. Um, this is by Max the Knitter. If you want a super simple um, palette cleanser of a project with like nice garter stripes that create like a really long, fun shawl that you can like wrap around multiple times. Great gift for somebody who has a very simple style. Um, this is the one for you. I knit this out of Rosa Pomar's Brusca yarn, which is, you know, Brusca by name, Brusca by nature. It is a rustic, rustic yarn. It is full of veg vegetation when I was knitting it. Um, but it is so, like, it's, I do think it's woolen spun, so it's really, really light and warm. And I, I'm gonna definitely give this a B rank simply because I don't wear it that often. I don't tend to wear shawls out that much. Um, which is something I've learned about myself, even though I love making them and I do love this finished piece. I think it looks good on me. I like the colors. I like the earthy tones. I'm happy with the piece. I think the Brusca yarn is like super fun and different to what I'm used to. I mean, it's, it's really, really, really rustic. Um, but I don't wear it that often, unfortunately, but that's not anybody's fault, but my own. Um, but yeah, I do really, really like it. The feel shawl. It's beautiful, but a B rank for me. Don't wear it that often. Um, but it is a beautiful piece. So if you, if it speaks to you and you're like, I would wear that every day, then go out, go forth and knit it. But um, I haven't found myself um, wearing it that often. And even at home, we always have shawls thrown over our shoulders. My boyfriend has definitely gotten the habit of doing it. And this isn't one we reach for to put over our shoulders, but it is beautiful. So again, yeah, B rank. Beautiful, had lots of fun making it, but um, don't wear it that often, unfortunately. Okay, neckwear. If you wanna know something about me, I love a cowl. And I made two this year. Andrew Murray, I feel like she's the queen of cowls. So I made two cowls by her this year. First is this one. This is the DRK Everyday Cowl. I'll come up close so you can see the amazing pattern. The yarn is La Bien May. These two colorways are um, the Studio Ghibli Princess Mononoke collection. So the green is called Evergreen Forest, I believe, and or Eternal Forest. And then the um, other stripe is called Mononoke. I love these two colors. I was, I was watching the movie and I was so inspired by the colors. Um, this is the Twist Nouveau base. I absolutely love it. I wear this a ton. This is absolutely a, a rank for me. I wear this a ton. My, you can see, my um, eye cord is quite tight. So it does, I do have to squeeze it around my head to get it on. Um, but I do absolutely love this. I love the colors. It's super soft um, as a base. So I think it's really, really nice. What I will say as a person with a beard and stubble quite often, I mean, I'm clean shaven now, but when I do have stubble and I wear it, you might be able to see even like up here, it um, it like scratches against the yarn and makes the yarn pill um, because it's quite a soft base. So here on it, like on the, the, the lower part here, it's like really crisp and nice and up here it's quite fuzzy. That's nobody's fault. But um, yeah, when I'm wearing this, it is, it is, something to think about. So if I do make this pattern again, which I, I might do, um, I would kind of pick a more like rustic yarn or a yarn that doesn't um, pill as often because the Twist Nouveau base is nice and soft and squishy. So it's it's wonderful base, but um, yeah, it um, doesn't like my stubble very much, but cool pattern. Um, it's seamed up the back. Um, all of Andrew Mary's cowls are done like that. They're knit flat and then seamed up the back. If I was to make a cowl pattern, I think I would try and like only do the point in the flat and then join in the round. I think it might make it a bit more fun and easier not having that, not having that uh, seeming to do at the end. But it's no, it's no big deal. It's pretty seamless. <laughs> uh, sorry. So yeah, DRK Everyday Cowl, definitely an A, wear it every other day. I'm always wearing a cowl. I think like they're kind of really becoming part of my personality at this point because I have one on um, every day at work, my, it's like part of my outfits, regardless of the weather is one of these cows. It's kind of become like a comfort blanket for me. And so I made another cowl. This is the shift cowl. This is a super, super popular, super 
um, almost famous pattern, uh, definitely famous stitch pattern by Andrea Mowry. And I, this is like my neon summer sparkly version with pinks and greens and just, it ended up so cool and I'm so happy with this one. So I have two of these now. I have yarn for a third. If you will talk about that in my next kind of regular podcast episode. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I love this pattern. I love, I love this pattern. I love the object so much. I put these on all the time and I wear them all the time. I have two and I, I just love them. I would, I would say like the shift is like an S rank for me. I, I love this pattern. I wear it all the time. I love the yarn. It doesn't, even though it's near my stubble, it doesn't like pill the same way the other one does. Um, yeah, it's fairly meth like a uh, meditative knit. It is seamed up the back as well. You can see there. Can't recommend it enough. I feel like this is also a great like knitting mojo invigorator. If you are struggling to finish things, or feeling not like you've got a lot of mojo with your knitting, get yourself like three colors of amazing yarn that you absolutely love, inspire you, completely different, blah, 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 and knit yourself one of these. It's just such a wearable, fun piece that you can throw on and just bring joy and can like, when you've got all these colors mixed together, it goes with so many things. And if you wear like all like neutral and then throw this on, this is your boom your pop. Absolutely love it. So absolutely a S rank for me. I love the shift cowl pattern and I, I'm probably going to end up knitting one every year until I die. So love it. Absolutely love it. So yeah, these two cowls. Great. This is definitely an A rank. Love this one. Shift S rank. Amazing. Can't get enough. And then I wanted to come to our last finished object. I only have one and it is a early, early prototype of my first pattern. 2023 was the year that I released my first knitting pattern. Thank you to everyone who went out and downloaded it. It has meant a lot to me. It was a lot of work, more work than I expected, but I was really, really happy with my Busca hat pattern. This is the smallest size, so it's super tight. It doesn't even like, doesn't really fit me, <laughs> my head. Um, this isn't the smallest. Yeah, it's probably the smallest size that We've knit. This wasn't the final yarns we used in. This is in some raw wool company yarn um, that I held double and made quite chunky. So it's kind of closer to a worsted weight than DK. The pattern is a DK weight pattern. It's got this color work on the brim and then ribbed top. Uh, absolutely loved making this. Um, I made four yeah i made four different samples tweaks worked hard on this one to get it just the way i wanted it to get it to be what i wanted it to be the three other um uh what do you call them oh my god the three other samples that i made um were given to my two of my brothers and my father at christmas and so now they're over an island with them so i only have this one which is um the, uh, one of the early prototypes. Uh, so, you know, maybe this year I'm gonna make my, knit myself uh, my one for me, that's my favorite version uh, or the final version. Um, but yes, I released my first pattern last year and I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud of the, how much work I put into it. it I really, um, you know, wanted it to be done right. I wanted it to be done fairly and I wanted it to be to the highest standard that I can possibly have it be. And I hope it has done that. And those of you who have uh, downloaded or those of you who've knit the pattern, some people have knit like multiple multiples. It's absolutely amazing. And um, just, you know, touches my heart. Um, thank you so much to everyone who has knitted. If you want to knit this, the link to it will be down in the description to get it on Ravelry. Um, yeah, it's a fun pattern with great for, you know, your first color work pattern because it's in the round for the brim and then you just decrease up. Um, but yes, this is my Busca hat pattern. I'm so proud of this. This um, hopefully will be the beginning of things to come. So I'm very, very proud of, proud of this. This is definitely absolute S rank heirloom piece. Even though I can't wear this because it's too small for me, I am never going to give this up because it was the first, um, the first 
sample, the first design. So yeah, very, very proud of this and very grateful for everyone who helped me get to this, to everyone who tested it, to everyone who gave me feedback on it, and also to everyone who downloaded it and purchased it and has knit it. So thank you to all of you for that. I really, really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. This community is amazing. And this little hat is one of the millions and millions of examples of why this community is fantastic. So yes, that was my last finished object. I wanted to finish on the um, the pattern, the Bosque hat pattern, and yeah, that's it. So here's the final ranking um, of everything that I've knit. No frogs, no frogs, no frogs, no frogs. Everything are things that I am, de they're gonna stay in my collection for the time being, um, apart from those couple that I, you know, maybe give away if there's a friend or family member who um, really, really loves it. But um, nothing's going this year, everything's staying, and I'm very, very proud of everything I've made this year. It's been a very, it wasn't such a year of um, kind of frantic making, apart from one or two things. I kind of wanted to be a bit more intentional, and I'm hoping that this year I'll be even more intentional. Um, I'm not one to set very concrete goals, but I did set some gentle goals, and I want to share them with you. So. The first goal for myself in 2024, my, my gentle goal or my gentle resolution is to keep my creativity joyful. I feel like this is so important in knitting that you just follow the joy, follow what makes you happy. Um, especially with social media, it's very easy to create things just to be able to share them and to get engagement with those. And I, even though I do create content, I want to try and focus and keep my creativity joyful so that I'm not chasing engagement, I'm not chasing likes. I think it's more um, authentic to just keep it joyful and make what you want to make um, in that time because, you know, people might like your photo, might like your video, but they're not there with you 24 seven, you know, to like it. So you gotta like what's in front of you, you gotta like what you're making. So that's what I want to do. Uh, my other gentle goal is to release four knitting patterns. I think that's a lot for me for the year, but we shall see. I definitely have the designs in mind. It's just finding the time to actually sit down and knit up samples and actually get it going. I think even just with a little hat, it really showed how much work goes into knitting patterns. I think it will be easier um, this year now that I know the whole process when it comes to making a knitting pattern. But um, yes, I definitely have a few ideas that I would love to get out before the end of the year. So let's see how that goes. Um, with your help and encouragement, we can get there. But um, yes, I think four would be a, four would be amazing. Like two or three would be, you know, what's well, good, better, best. So good would be two, better would be three, and best would be four um, for me, for my life, for what I'm capable of doing. So yes, that's one. Uh, third one is to use up scraps and my stash. I feel like everyone says this every year. Uh, I think I've I've already started this really strong. You'll see in one of my whips in the next episode, I've started using up scraps, going into my stash, being intentional about what I purchase. So I'm trying to do that as best I can. Um, but again, I'm the part, you know, it goes in order. I'm gonna keep my creativity joyful. If the stash isn't providing me joy, then I'm not going to like really force it because I don't want me forcing using things in my stash to be a reason I don't want to create. So. That's that. Uh, and then fourth one is volunteering more. Last year I did a little bit of volunteering with Craft Forward, which is a company here, a company, a charity here in the UK who um, use crafting and community to help fight homelessness. And I really, really enjoyed that. That was towards the end of last year and I wanna do more this year. So that's definitely something that I want to do using my crafting and my knowledge um, and my love of community to give back more. It's one of my goals for this year. And then spend more in-person creative community time. I wanna spend more time with my creative friends, my knitting friends. Uh, I did a little bit of that this year and it was really what filled up my cup and really brought me joy. So I'm hoping to do more of that this year. Maybe if, you're, if you live in London and you see this, I'm kinda of wanna start a knit night. Let's see, would be fun, would be fun, let's see. Uh, and then my final gentle goal is, not even written here yet because I've only come up with it recently, my goal is to weave more, but I want to weave fabric and then sew a garment out of it. That would be my goal. So um, I don't know if you know, I got a loom last year. I haven't used it that much. I've kind of identified the reasons why I haven't used it. Some of the tools aren't working for me and I want to invest in maybe some different tools to create nice fabric. I do sew, so the goal would be to use up um, 
you know, improve my weaving skills, make some fabric, and then um, sew a garment out of that fabric. So there's so many different ways to use fiber and yarn, not just knitting, and I want to explore that a bit more in 2024. And I think weaving is one of the ways to do that because I already have um, most of the tools that I need and I just need to improve my skills a little bit and see where that takes me. So those are my last goals for 2024. I don't do make nine, I don't do, I wanna do this many sweaters or that many things. It's just gotta be joyful, it's gotta be fun. Uh, I do knit every day and I will always just follow what makes me happy. So let's just keep doing that as my plan. If you have any goals for 2024 when it comes to your crafting, please let me know. If you've enjoyed this video and you're not as subscribed and you wanna hear more about what I get up to and you're excited by all that stuff, do subscribe. I will release a video, I uh, will say every month, I for sure can guarantee you we'll do one every month this year and um, you'll all see what I'm working on. So let me know what your craft goals are for 2024 and um, let's keep the creativity joyful. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you will continue to watch into 2024. I love this channel, I love this community and I love making videos for you. So thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting. I appreciate it so much. Let's keep going into 2024. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye.